Sage Tata to another episode of Dimitra's Dishes. Today we're making another version of Caridopita, which is a Greek classic walnut cake, but we're adding chocolate to it. It's perfect for the holiday season or for tea time. Let's get started making it. This cake is in the family of desserts in Greek known as syropiasta, which means that they're syrup based. So we always start with the syrup first. In a small saucepan, I have a cup and a half of granulated sugar. To that, I'm going to add two cups of water and I'm going to cook it over medium heat and let it come to a boil, stirring it constantly until the syrup dissolves. Once the syrup dissolves, I'm going to take it off of the heat and I'm going to add in half a cup of honey. Greek honey is preferable, it's very flavorful. And I'm also going to add a teaspoon of pure vanilla extract. So now it's time to make the cake batter. In my tabletop mixer, I have six eggs that are at room temperature. To that, I'm adding a cup of granulated sugar. And I'm going to beat this until it's nice and fluffy. You'll see that the eggs are ready when they start turning pale. Then I'm going to add a cup of light olive oil. You can use vegetable oil if you want. Any vegetable oil that's flavorless will do. But since I have um, this light olive oil on hand, that's what I'm using. Cup of that. And a cup of whole milk. And a teaspoon of pure vanilla extract. We're going to mix that until everything is all combined. I have a 9 by 13 inch baking pan. I'm just going to grease it with this olive oil. I've poured a little too much actually, so put a little less. If you want to, you can use um, cake, uh, what is it called, the baking spray. You can use that instead. For the dry ingredients, I have all purpose flour, some baking powder, baking soda. This is ground cinnamon, a little pinch of salt, and some ground cloves. I'm just going to whisk it all together to combine it. And I'm going to add it to the wet mixture and give it a mix until everything is all combined. Next, I have some walnuts that I've coarsely ground in the food processor. I'm just going to transfer them to the bowl and I'm just going to add a little bit, about a tablespoon of all-purpose flour to them. And to them, I'm also going to add a cup of semi-sweet chocolate chips. You could use dark chocolate chips if you want. And I'm going to add a little more flour. The flour helps keep them suspended in the batter. If you don't put the flour in, what happens is these are heavy and they might sink to the bottom. And you'll have all of the chocolate chips in the bottom instead of throughout the cake. So we're going to add these inside as well. And give it a final mix until everything is incorporated. So just go in with a spatula and give everything a nice mix so that way if anything is stuck to the bottom, it just gets evenly dispersed and then you just pour all of the batter into the prepared baking pan. Smells so good. This is a perfect holiday cake. My oven is preheated to 350 degrees Fahrenheit. This is going to bake in the center rack until a toothpick that's inserted in the center comes out clean. That can take anywhere between 45 minutes to 55 minutes. It just depends on, on your oven and on the dish that you're baking it in. Once it comes out of the oven, you're going to pour the syrup on top immediately. The syrup will have cooled, the cake will be hot, and it'll absorb everything the right way. You can help the syrup absorb inside the cake by poking the cake all around with a toothpick. That's going to help all the syrup go throughout the cake, like I said. Set it aside and let it cool for about an hour or two. And then in the meantime, we're going to make the chocolate ganache. So once the syrup is absorbed, it takes about 45 minutes or so, maybe a little longer. Then you want to make the ganache. So I have eight ounces of semi-sweet chocolate here. I'm just going to chop it up a little bit. So to the chocolate, we're going to add a cup of scalding hot heavy whipping cream and a teaspoon of vanilla extract. And whisk this all together until the chocolate is melted and you're going to see it's going to turn into a beautiful shiny sauce. And the final step is to pour the ganache on top. Make sure you spread it all over the cake. Now comes the hardest part of making this cake, which is waiting for this to cool down to room temperature for the chocolate to set. Now this is going to take about an hour or so. Once it's ready, then we're going to cut into it.
So the cake has set and the time has come to taste it. I cannot wait. It looks beautiful. Now cut it into whatever size serving sizes that you prefer. I like to cut into these little diamond shapes just like I did here. But you can do it big, small, little rectangles, squares, whatever you guys like. Put it on a plate, make some coffee or tea, call some friends over. It's time to take a bite. Let's see if it's good. Mmm. What a combination. The warm spices of the cinnamon and the clove go so well with the chocolate. If you've ever had a Mexican hot chocolate, which is basically a hot chocolate with lots of cinnamon in it, you'll definitely love this. It has all the warm spices of the holiday season, a perfect holiday cake, but also really good for tea time. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section down below. If you want to learn how to make a really good cup of Greek coffee to go with this, you're going to want to click over here and I'll see you right over there. Yes, yes.